Deviance and deviance residuals are concepts that are commonly used in GLMs. And let's take a look at what the deviance tells us and what deviance residual are. So deviance residuals are calculated based on the individual observation log likelihoods. The deviance residual is uh, minus two times the log likelihood and then we take a square root. That deviance residual has some interesting properties that are parallel to the, the residuals in a normal regression analysis. The square deviance residual is here and the sum of squared deviance residuals is the full deviance of the sum. The full deviance is minus two times the log likelihood. So the parallel to regression analysis is that maximizing the log likelihood is the same thing as minimizing the, the overall deviance, which is the sum of squares of, resi of residual deviance residuals. So GLM estimation, so maximum likelihood estimation is equivalent to calculating uh, the least squares of deviance residuals. So there is an interesting parallel. There are also some other interesting parallels that I will explain in the next few slides. When you do a GLM, you will get statistics about deviance residuals and the overall deviance as shown here. So we have residual statistics. These are about deviance residuals. And these model quality indices are about divines, overall divines of the model. Let's take a look at the residual statistics first. The residual statistics here uh, give us the, the quartiles, minimum, maximum and median of the residuals. The divines residuals, if the model is correctly specified, so the distribution is correct and the linear prediction is correct, they are normally distributed in uh, large samples. The deviance residual is also uh, or the square of, of deviance residual also quantifies how much each observation contributes to the actual likelihood value. So they can be used as influence statistics similarly to residual in R square. So we, one way of doing diagnostics to GLMs is that when you have a large sample you can check which observations have a large deviance residual and whether the device residuals are normally distributed or not. Then we have the overall model deviance here in the model quality indices. We have two deviances and uh, the null deviance and the residual deviance and then we have a statistic called AIC. The null deviance is the deviance for a model with intercept only. So a model where none of the explanatory variables explain the dependent variable at all. So here we have 3970 degrees of freedom for the null deviance. Then the deviance for the estimated model is the residual deviance. We have 3916, so we lost one degree of freedom because we had one independent variable. And this is the overall deviance, and which is minus two times the log likelihood. So minus two times log, if we multiply this by minus half, then that's the, uh, the value of the log likelihood that the computer actually minimizes when it ex estimates the model. Then uh, AIC is uh, similar to uh, adjusted R square so that it can be used for model comparison. So it penalizes the deviance for the complexity of the model. We, we subtract the number of parameters divided by two from the deviance that gives us AIC. And AIC can be used for comparing two models that are not nested when they are fitted to the same data. The AIC itself, the value, whether it's large or not, it doesn't really have any interpretation. We can just use to compare AICs and if deviance is smaller, it means that uh, the model fits, be the model explains the data better. And that means that if AIC is smaller, then the model fits better. So we can use AIC for comparing which model we use. For example, if we have uh, two models that have different sets of variables that are non-nested, then we could use AIC to compare which of those models is better for the data.